I'm Chris and I'm just outside my house and outside my house I've got a black bin. You've probably got one outside your house too. And all through the week all the rubbish from our house we've thrown into this bin. And today is bin day and so the bin men are going to come collect all of this stuff up and take it away. So I'm going to put my bin out now and I can forget all about it. Or can I? You see, there's a lot of effort that gets put into dealing with our rubbish. In this film, we're going to find out what happens to the things that we put in our black bin and we're also going to think about where that stuff came from in the first place. And to help us, let's meet my friend, Dr. Rotolotta. <laughs> Now, before we begin talking about what happens to your rubbish once you've thrown it into your bin, I've come up with two golden rules designed to help us to think about our rubbish. Let's begin with golden rule number one. Everything comes from somewhere. Golden rule number two. Everything has to go somewhere. So, what actually happens to our rubbish once we've thrown it away? Where is this place called Away? Well, I'm afraid there isn't a magical place called Away where we can throw all of our rubbish and it simply disappears. Oh no! For this, we need to look at our golden rule number two. Everything must go somewhere. So, let's have a closer look at what happens to your rubbish after you've put it in your bin. Here we see the bin men collecting the rubbish from the doorstep and emptying it into the bin lorry. This happens again and again and again until the rubbish from every house on every street has been collected. Here the bin lorry has been driven a few miles out of town. Takes a left turn here, and we're ready to dump. Here we can see two bin lorries emptying their rubbish. They then drive away to pick up, yes, you guessed it, more rubbish. Every day, 250 bin lorries empty their rubbish into this one same place. Now this vehicle is called a compactor and is extremely heavy. It drives back and forth over all of the rubbish to squish it all down and make more space. This area is called a landfill site. Let's just get a look at how big it really is. It is huge. Two million tons of rubbish. Some of which will have come from your very own black bin. Notice how it's covered in a thin layer of soil. This stops animals like rats and seagulls from foraging for food here and also stops plastic bags from blowing away in the wind. But I certainly don't fancy having a picnic here, ha! Huh. So, when we put stuff into our black bin, it just gets taken to a huge hole in the ground and is left to rot away. In fact, in Britain, there are over 4,000 landfill sites and every day they're filling up more and more with our rubbish. Now I wonder, how long has this been going on for? In the past, all of man's rubbish would have broken down and gone back into the ground. Things like fruit, or leftover vegetables, or maybe leftover meat. Certain things, however, would have taken a little longer to break down. Things such as 
shells, or in this case, animal bones. But then man began to make materials that wouldn't break down. Materials such as plastics. For example, plastic bottles. Metal cans. Crisp packets. And weird children's toys. Who are you calling weird? This means that if modern man threw all of his rubbish into a pile next to his home, nature would not be able to rot it away. Now, imagine what your garden would look like if you filled it with your rubbish. Especially if that rubbish included mouldy old food and pff, dirty nappies. Ugh. So, as far back as 3,000 years ago, people began to make special places on the edges of towns and cities where all of their rubbish could be thrown. And now I will show you how a modern landfill site is made. Find a hole in the ground. Maybe an old quarry where they took rocks out of the earth to make things like roads or houses. I dug this hole to help with my explanation. Next, line the hole with a special plastic liner. Put pipes in the bottom of the hole which will suck up all of the water that collects at the bottom. As this rainwater passes through the rubbish it gets more and more polluted. If this leaks into nearby lakes and rivers it can leave them awfully poisoned. Then dump rubbish into it. Lorry after lorry after lorry will dump its rubbish into this site until the landfill site is full. When the site is full, it is covered with another layer of plastic. The soil is put on top and grass is planted. As the waste rots away, it makes a gas called methane, which can set on fire. So they put pipes into the waste to let out the gas. Eventually, it could look like this. Oh, right. But it does seem a waste to throw away so much stuff. I mean, surely some of it could be used again for something else. And besides, we've only thought about the second golden rule so far. What about the first golden rule? Exactly, sir. The first golden rule says that everything must come from somewhere. So that means that everything that we throw into our bins must have come from somewhere. Take, for example, this food can. Of course this food can came from a shop, but where did it come from before that? This food can is made from steel, so that steel must have come from somewhere. Let's take a look at how that steel is made. We'll need three ingredients, or what are called raw materials. Raw materials are natural products which have not been changed by humans. The first is a special rock called iron ore and it looks like this. Iron ore can be found underground in certain parts of the world. The second is limestone. It looks like this and is also found underground. The third is coal, which looks like this. And this too is found underground. But because the raw materials are buried in the ground, you have to first get rid of anything that lives above them. So trees and animals are disturbed. Once the land is cleared, the raw materials are dug out of the ground and taken to a factory and are made into steel, which can then be made into cans. The cans then go to the shop. Someone buys the can from a shop, eats the food from inside it, and then throws it into their black bin, from where it will be taken to a landfill site. But the next time a can is needed, more raw materials need to be dug from the ground, so more trees must be chopped down. The ingredients again get made into a can, which goes to the shop, and then to a home, and then to the landfill. Eventually, we use up all of the raw ingredients. 
The trees are all dead, along with any other plants or animals that lived there, and the landfill site is more full than ever. So, all of that effort and disturbance to nature has taken place just to make some steel cans. But, when we throw things into the landfill, we can only use them once. Once. When really, we could use them again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Okay, um, thanks Dr. Rodlotter. So, all in all, landfills are not a good way of dealing with our rubbish because all the things that go there don't get used again. And because making new stuff from raw materials, which you have to do if you threw all of your old stuff into a landfill site, has a huge impact upon the earth. It's weird to think that all of the new shiny stuff in the shops is going to end up as rubbish one day. That is, that the people who buy it will decide that they don't want it anymore and are going to throw it away. I hope that they can think of something better to do with their rubbish than send it to landfill. Next time, we're going to think about some things we can do with our rubbish that's better than sending it to landfill. But till then, goodbye.